Last week, we were bombarded with phone calls and emails on the interesting interview we had with Mrs. Eriwele, a retired assistant registrar of the University of Benin, where she gave an expose on the antisocial characteristics of cultism. So based on this, we are repeating the episode so that people, especially parents, who are not opportune to see that particular episode, can now sit back and learn more about the antics of cultists. Fighting crime depends on collective effort, hence we solicit for more contributions from you. A citadel of higher learning, otherwise known as a hybrid tour, are first giving the entire public room for concern. Cultism, the deadly vice, has continued to plague our campuses for quite some time now, thereby giving the security operatives it had not to crack. Rather than getting engrossed in academics, cultists rove campuses seeking those they have grudges to settle with, therefore making life unbearable for both students and staff. How then do we rid our institutions of this vice? This edition of Crime Fighters is focused on discussion with a woman of knowledge, Mrs. Eri Welly, a retired assistant registrar of University of Benin, who gives an expose on the antisocial characteristics of cultism. Anywhere in the world, policing is a joint business. It is not the monopoly or the exclusive preserve of law enforcement agencies alone. Therefore, all citizens living in this country are advised to exist in symbiotic relationship with the members of the police force. It is by cooperating with the force and vice versa, that is the police cooperating with the public, that together we can forge ahead in eliminating criminality in our society. Would like you to introduce yourself to members of the public. Well, um, Mrs. Erewili, retired principal assistant registrar, University of Benin. I was meant to understand that while you were at the university, you were doing the research on the involvement of students in cultism. What is cultism? Well, in the first instance, let me spell a part of my schedule that involved some of these students. I was careers officer actually and one of my schedule was to screen, interview and approve students associations and clubs being in student affairs office. When you talk about cultism, you talk about a group meeting for a particular purpose coming together under one umbrella, under one interest and not coming out openly with whatever their motives are or whatever their interest is. Having interacted with them, would you want to tell us how many of such cultists or association you were able to find out while, while you were in the school? I did not interact specifically with cult groups. I interacted with students generally. And we had a lot of clubs and associations. They included academic, um, tribal, old um, students of the old schools, students, old schools, and then we had spiritual groups, Christian groups, Muslim groups, and so on. Some philanthropic too. But among them, we found that some students were carrying out activities as against the regulations of the university. And we, tried, we had to trace them to their roots. We had cult activities, you know, students being attacked, whether male or female. And when we intervened, we discovered through interviews with them facing different panels that they belonged to different cult groups. And at a point, we discovered that there were about 42 cult groups in the country. Because there are some that exist, for instance, in Calabar, you talk about the Vikings. They don't exist here. You talk about pirates, they virtually exist in all universities. And when you talk about pirates, the next group, being the premier group, founded by a renowned writer, Motive, 
was not to attack or to cause trouble in the country. But as it were, the younger ones got into universities at tender age and they read a different interpretation into the initial motive. Okay. You, you talked about the initial motive of the founder of uh, the Pirate the Club, Pirate, for example. Uh, what it, it was yes. different from what the younger generation Yes, was of doing. course. What, the, what was the initial... The initial motive is just like you have the Nadeko, people trying to correct the ills of the society. For instance, within the university setup, you had things like victimization, you had things like oppression, you know, older ones oppressing the younger ones, forcing them into doing things they wouldn't normally want to do, or people being, being victimized academically for one reason or the other. And then, for the pirate group, it was, if you had a corrupt lecturer, they would bring out the offenses of such a lecturer to the knowledge of the public. And they would trace it to the extent that that person is brought to book. But that is not what it is now. That is not what is operating now. Now, you, you, you said you have 48... Um, 42. 42 uh, cults... Groups. Groups in Nigeria. Uh, do you want to mention some other groups that you know? Well, I can mention that virtually all universities have their cult groups. The thing has gone down to secondary school level, that even secondary schools have cult groups. If I must zero down on my state in Benin, secondary, um, I mean in Edo State, secondary schools have cult groups. I traced some of them and I told the principal, you have a cult group in your school. He said no. I say the cult group, because when I'm accusing somebody, I want to come out with facts. The cult group in your school is known as the death roll. Find out. There are some students, some of your students, some of the students from outside, who operate in your school, in your own school uniform. Some of these cult boys in secondary schools have up to 10 uniforms of different secondary schools. So if they are going to operate, say, in Edo College, where you have the unbeatable black movement, they will go in Edo College uniform. And the poor man at the gate, the gate man, will not know the identity facially. He might know just a few students. But when you see somebody coming into your school, in that school uniform, will you turn him back? You know he has some relationship with your school. He must be one of the students you don't even know. So they go in and perpetrate all sorts of things. If you go to IC, then they had the death row. Go to ICC, they had the fine boys. You know, they were there. Up to boys' model secondary school, they had the black acts in that school. How are you able to differentiate this, this cult? Is the well, like in the University of Benin, we know the different cult groups that exist there. They know the ones in Ibadan. The students themselves relate with each other in other universities. If they have to fall on a university, for instance, if they had their headquarters in Ibadan and they won the headquarters of a particular cult group, say the Eye Confraternity, to move to Benin, they know how they fight for supremacy. And they make sure that the headship or the headquarters moves to Benin. That is when you have inter-university fights. Everybody wanting to retain power. But like identifying the various groups like we tried to do in Uniben, like I told you before, when you pick the Eye Confraternity, for instance, you will find that they are mainly Yoruba students. Eye in the first instance is a Yoruba word, which means bed. Like when I was handling, screening these students, they tried to register with the university so that whatever they do will be authentic, will be legal. They will have some legal backing that if they were bad, would they have been registered? You know, they have that, young ones have such attitudes. They came forward and they said they spread club. I said, well, we have conditions, criteria for accepting any group, any association, any club. Minimum of 25 members. So let us see the number of 
students you have in your club, how they are spread. By the time you find that, the list you're getting is from a particular tribe, then you sense there must be something. If the list you're getting is from a particular department, if it is just basically social sciences and the students, you have 25 names and 20 are students in sociology and anthropology, you know they are up to something. They may have taken their route from their homes. If you find the pirate confraternity, I will want to say it before them because I track them down to where they meet in Anchor Point in Benin because I wanted to you know, monitor a particular student. And when you see the pirates, you will find that they have the oldest members, governors, um, some vice chancellors, I must say. Because by the time a child stays in the bush and throws stones at people who are older than his parents, you must know that he's getting some backing. They have a lot of backing. They are bold. They are sponsored. They are funded. And they have a network. So by the time you pick a pirate student who is in trouble, find out who the parent is. If he was not an ex-student of University of Ibadan, he will be of the University of Ife. They say childhood shows manhood as morning shows the day. Some of them have their parents in cult groups. And they got, you know, lured into it. They were attracted somehow, either by the company their parents kept or by the activities they performed. And so when they get to school, they look out for such things. The pirate confraternity was just one until they fell, you know, they fell out with each other as members. And then there was this breakaway group, people having the same ideologies. And then those ones now call themselves the Bucaneers. Where the pirates will tell you others is others. The Bucaneers will say others no others. They are the opposite of the pirates. You have the symbol, the skull, and then the crossbones for the pirates. The skull on top, the crossbones below. For the Bucaneers, if you want to go the opposite way, definitely the skull must come down and the bones will go up. So to identify some of these cult groups, if you pick the area, if there is any crisis now, and they say it's the area perpetrating the crisis, if it is from a particular university, the moment you know that they are mainly sponsored by Yoruba students, you bring out the Ondo students list, or your state students list, Lagos state students list, Ogun state students list. Accuse all the students on those lists. Put their names up that they are to face a panel. By the time you do that, you would have gotten not less than half of the members. And when you pinpoint them, you take them individually and interview them, who are your friends? You will get more members. You pick the original ones, some of them definitely are no, no members. You can't have a whole group of people join one club. Some will go into AA, some will join the Marfites, some will join the Black Arts, some will join the Vikings, some will join the Juries, and so on. Yeah, you talked about the symbol. Yes. What does that symbol signify? We all knew that um, some of these things emanated from America, like you were talking about um, the Martin Luther King yeah, like um, the Black Axe is a baby of the new black movement of America. Like the black race there, fighting against the white. You know, this racial discrimination thing. They went into new black movements. And they have their symbols. They have the axe. It's not supposed to be a full axe to cut firewood or whatever. Just small axe. And then they have the small coffin. The axe is a symbol of fight. And it is to say that they are fighting a cause. Not fighting people. You are fighting a particular cause. You want to fight poverty in Nigeria. You could come up with a symbol. Maybe photograph of a child dying of, you know, not being well fed. You understand? Just like you have photographs depicting AIDS patients now. Or anything to show AIDS. Uh -huh. So they also have their symbols. The black arts, 
with um, the axe, a symbol of fight, that they are fighting a cause. And the coffin is to represent the fallen heroes like Martin Luther King, who fought that racial discrimination until he died. That even in the face of death, continue to fight that cause. Not continue to fight A, B, or C. Your neighbors, your contemporaries in school, somebody who has taken your girlfriend, or somebody you, or a girl that you have approached who said no to you and said yes to somebody else. Some of these things could easily be explained off because of the age bracket of undergraduates. Those days you had undergraduates who were married with children. And the number of students in the universities as at that time was manageable enough, either for government or any body in power, the school authorities. If you had about 50 students in the university, and you had 40 workers, vice chancellor, registrar, all the principal officers. There's no way you won't be able to monitor the number of students on one on one, one on one basis. But these days, when you have in Uniben over 40,000, University of Ibadan about 57,000, how do you cope? And many of them are living out. We monitored them, harassed them to such a stage that they no longer operate on the campus. They move out. Like in Benin, you have them around the Kenwa campus, you have at Osasoge, you have in BDPA, you have at Ikosodi. You know, we know their zones where they operate. But one thing with them is, if you don't cross their way, they don't come after you. What do you mean? What do you mean if you say if you don't cross their way? For example, you talked about a boy chasing you, chasing after you, and you as a girl, you say, no, I'm not here for that. I'm here for my studies. Is that crossing their path? Well, when you're talking about their fights, they don't fight because they want to fight. They came together initially because they have a common interest. They are friends. The major fights they usually have are two inter cult fights that is within the same cult you can have an eye kill an eye the way kuraino was killed in unibe he had graduated he wanted his younger brother to, be, to become the don of eye and the association itself the cult group wanted a different person in fact a different person had been installed as the don of eye he wanted to superimpose his own brother and then they went after him you were so powerful in your time Leave us to do our own thing. That was how they killed him. You can have cult fights between two cult groups, Eye and Black Axe, most of the time. They are about the most popular now. The pirates, they have too many mature people over there. So those mature ones, governors and the rest, they monitor the younger ones. They check them. These ones don't have checks. The people they have over them virtually are chiefs, some radicals in the society who are patrons and so on. Do I say, okay. do I say these elderly ones use these boys for their political selfishness? Would you want to agree with me? Well, some of them have that. For instance, when they had, um, for picking a vice chancellor in the universities, a vice chancellor could run for two terms, first term of four years, second term of three years. In their first year, in their first coming, at times they are relaxed. They are well accepted by the university. In coming a second time, some of them use these boys to harass any opponents wanting to come on the same seat. Some of them even after winning their second term, you know, by the time people come and tap at your door and they say you are want. Or they say we will come again. We know your movement. You know the particular group. Or even if they don't do that, they come in a friendly way. When you stay in your house and you suddenly hear, hey, party, party outside, you don't know that group. Do you know such a group? That that is a bony group. So when you stay in your house and you suddenly hear on regular basis, ahoy, no friend, no foe blood for blood, you know definitely that is the pirate confraternity. 
they have their language, they have their outfits, they have their groups. Some of them have hairstyles. They carry small symbols. Like in one school, a, a student was killed here in Benin. And they had this um, ad hoc meeting for parents. And they got there, and professors were prophesying away the mode of admission into this school, this, this, that. It should be only parents um, who work with the university and all that stuff. And it was your word against mine. Everybody wanted to be an orator. I got up at a stage and said, we we're not facing the issue on ground. It is not fair. It is easy for all of us to come, down, come out and be rattling away. It is not pen rat race we have come into. A particular home has been hit. It could be mine next time. It could be yours. A child has been, that child was called out of the parents' house. And they later, about three days after, found his corpse in an uncompleted building of Uwasota. And you are telling us that there is no cult group in this school. If I may put it to you, the cult group, I have gone underground. That is the language of the cultists. I have gone underground too. And I have found out that the cult group in your school is known as the wild cats. And they carry something like a chewing stick with the image of a cat on top. And they cut their hair in a particular way. And they put a mark, two marks behind their head. And this is the language they use. You know, by the time you know this, there's no use hiding. It could be anybody any day. Anybody's child could be a victim. If you know it, you watch out your children. Because in the present day Nigeria, it is not the, you can vouch for your children because you don't want disgrace. But when the chips are down, it is not the same students you see at home that are in the school. Crime Fighters. The searchlight on crime and criminality.